What's up guys? So today we take our first baby steps towards the Gen 5 supercharger swap and today we're doing lower intake manifold prep. So first thing we're going to need to do is remove some things to make this a little easier. You can see it's not in too bad a shape. So I don't expect this is going to be too difficult a job. All I'm going to do is pop this housing right here off. And pop this thermostat out. It appears to still be good, but that's okay. Get that out of the way. The only other thing, let's see, we'll keep this nut. We'll go ahead and take that off and then flip it over. And we want to take this out so we're not scrubbing on it. Let's we'll put this right over here out of the way. So now that we have a bare manifold, the first thing that we're going to do, because there we're going to, I'm going to do some modifying of it first. Then once I've done that, we'll go ahead and clean everything up good. But one of the first biggest modifications everyone does to these when you do this swap, and the one that we're gonna do here, is plugging these coolant passages. And that's because the when we put the new stuff on here, there's not gonna be anywhere for a coolant to go anyway. So plugging these will just keep it out of the upper intake or out of the supercharger and keep you know from having any chance of leaks or anything. To do that, I purchased this quarter inch NPT tap set, which comes with the drill bit that you need to drill it out. So here's your drill bit and then the tap. These are not super easy to get out of here sometimes, but this can be had, I think on Amazon for maybe $8. So it's not a very expensive thing to invest in and definitely worth it. Because what we're going to do is we're going to tap this to this size. Then I bought these Spectre pipe thread plugs. And we're just going to take the two quarter inch ones. We're going to run them in there with some uh, Loctite to seal that off. And then we won't have that problem anymore. So once you've got a drill with the appropriate chuck, the next thing that we're going to do, make sure that that's all the way tight, is we're going to take some WD-40 to lubricate the spot that we're drilling. Then you're just going to try to go at it nice and slow. Trying not to stick the drill bit. Like that. Once you've got that out of the way, just spray this off. This is why I'm doing this before cleaning this manifold. Makes things a lot easier down the road. The next thing we're gonna need is your tap, and we're gonna need something to drive it with. So for the sake of this one, I'm just gonna re-lube this with WD-40. And with the size of this tap, I can use just a wrench to get this started. And then all we're going to do you want to make sure you start this as close to dead perfect straight as possible. You don't want to thread it crooked. And then once you get it going, it should get easier to keep it straight. Just like that. Once it taps it past a certain point, it goes in really easy because this is just a thin piece. It's not solid all the way down. Then you just unthread it, like so. We'll thread the other one. So getting that initial bite is the hardest part. Once it 
once it grabs and actually gets the first thread cut in it it gets a lot easier and then once it gets past that first bit there it's going to get a whole lot easier now this is a tapered pipe thread so you do want to make sure that you thread it all the way down as deep as you need it because as this goes up it's going to get bigger the way you can tell if you've got it threaded well enough is to take this and you can just take and test fit one of these in there and make sure that it screws all the way down if it seems like it's not going to or seems like the hole is too small it probably means you need to tap this further because you just didn't get it all the way down there like this one I think I actually did a little bit too shallow yeah definitely so basically just you want to tap it all the way you don't want to stop short just like that so once you have test threaded both of your pipe plugs and you know that those are going to work we'll just sit those out of the way that's going to go into the things that are going back pile then we're going to clean this mess up all right and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this off because since we are since we are prepping this there's just no sense in leaving anything unclean because we're not in a hurry here. I want to replace all the gaskets. We're just going to do everything we can at one point. So you take both of those out and hit that with anything and it'll pop off just like that. And now your coolant passages are open to the outside, which is a, just an easier way to get in there and clean all that up. So the next thing I'm going to do is remove that gasket. Okay. It'll be there. Flip this. Oh, well, let's see. Top's pretty good gasket wise. Scrape down the sides a little bit. Get this RTV off these bottom pieces from where it meets the block. And on this particular one, the aluminum is in really good shape, which is very nice. So to clean this, basically what I've got planned here is a makeshift parts washer. This as my basin, and then to get in there and clean with, we're going to use some parts dip actually, which I plan on hanging on to and saving to reuse again in the future. This is basically the stuff they sell at auto parts stores for dunking carburetors and cleaning carburetor parts. So it should not have any problem decarbing this manifold. I'm just going to take that open. We're going to pull the dunk bucket out because I just don't need that. And then we're just going to pour some of this right onto here and keep the rest of that down there to dunk the brushes in then I've got I just picked up a new set of wire brushes for this because the ones I had were some of them gone already and some of them not in great shape so I figured we could just use some new ones so the next part of this is just kind of no fancy way about it it's just going to be scrubbing and then what i'm going to use on top of this is going to be carb cleaner 
just like this as a kind of a rinse off as we go. So it's about it's going to be messy. There's no way to get around that. outside because inside the building was just making way too much of a mess so now that we're out here just continuing the same thing kind of working my way from one side to the other using a combination of the dip and the spray usually mostly the spray just to rinse it off as we go And then I'm saving some brake clean towards the end because I think brake clean is the best just sort of finisher and, and agent to dry everything off once it's clean. Step two is right here. I took this vat, put a bunch, put what was left of that in it, and I'm just going to soak one side at a time for a few minutes and then clean the runners out. And then hopefully they'll look pretty good when I'm done. So, after a lot of cleaning, this is basically what it looks like. Pretty much at this point, I've cleaned everything good with the methods I showed you earlier. Went over everything with brake clean to dry it off and get the last little bit of dirt out. Then used a little bit of a silver wheel paint on the areas in between where the gaskets go just to clean up any last little bit. So then we're gonna take these pipe plugs and we're gonna put some red Loctite on them. This will help seal the threads so coolant doesn't get through, but it will also keep these from wiggling loose or ever coming back off again, because we do not want that. Once you've got them prepped and ready, it should be just as easy as threading these in by hand. If you tapped this down far enough, they should get snug just as they get level with the intake manifold, at which point you can just We'll cinch them a little bit with the ratchet at the end, but you should be able to mostly do this by hand And that's what I'm doing right here And with those installed This is basically the finished product for the intake manifold You can see here where I took the die grinder with the scotch bright pads which you can get at any auto parts store and just went over all of the flat surfaces where it was going to mate to something else to clean any old gasket material off, make sure everything is smooth, get rid of corrosion, any of that kind of thing. I think everything turned out good and I like the way the silver looks. The manifold that's on the car right now, I did not paint, I had just cleaned up. So let me know what you think of this silver as far as that goes with uh, for the new look for the intake. But you can see the bottom and the top do look good. Here you can also get a good view of this larger intake hole. But when I get them apart, I will sit down and we'll go over the Gen 5 versus Gen 3 intake and supercharger and why the Gen 5 is better. Uh, but I'm just saving that for once I have the Gen 3 off the car. In the next video, we will probably be, probably be looking at this Gen 5 and getting it prepped and getting it ready to go on the car too. But for now, just happy with this lower intake, with it being done. So just 
you guys, if you'll just let me know down in the comments what you think about what I should do color-wise. This is what's on the car right now, the factory Gen 3. And it's just painted red and then the lower intake, I cleaned it but I didn't paint it or anything. So if you guys will let me down, know down in the comments what you think I should do as far as the color theme for the Gen 5. If you think I should do anything different. If I should leave the lower intake silver or make it red or black or something like that. So just let me know down in the comments. So that's it. The lower intake looks a lot better now. Much cleaner. Ready for some gaskets. Ready for the supercharger to be prepped and ready to get put on the car. Hopefully there was some useful information in there. Uh, if so, make sure you drop this video a like. Drop me a comment, like I said, and let me know what you think I should do color scheme-wise or if there's anything you want to see along the way of doing this swap. And other than that, make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you see the next video when it comes out. And I will see you in that video. Thank you so much for watching, and peace.